Good afternoon, Warriors. Um, I'm Jessica Donner from your Career and Professional Development Office. It's my pleasure to introduce Carol Perez today, who's joining us from Leader Creek Fisheries. Um, she's going to be hosting our employer spotlight. Um, she's going to share more information about their organization and open opportunities. Um, but before I hand it over to Carol, just a few housekeeping items before we get started. Um, please make sure that you keep your webcams and your uh, microphones muted during the presentation. Um, there will be time at the end of the presentation for questions. But if you have any questions while Carol's sharing all this great information with us, you can always add them to the chat box. I'll be watching that and we'll make sure that we get them answered for you. Um, but at this time, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my webcam, hand it over to Carol um, to let us know about Leader Creek Fisheries. Great, great. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having us. Uh, we really appreciate the opportunity to connect with students and tell them a little bit more about this opportunity. I know last year, uh, my coworker, um, Emily, was able to go on campus and sort of speak to students live. Um, so we really appreciate the ability to still be able to connect with students, um, even though it's in a different situation. Um, and I will say we actually did have a few students come work with us during the summer last season who are from your school. So hopefully we'll be able to, um, like I said, connect with a couple more people and have you join us as well. So I just wanna go over um, a little bit about the company and sort of my role within the company and our summer opportunity. So let me tell you a little bit more about myself. So my name is Carol. I'm part of the human resources team at Leader Creek Fisheries. And so um, I started as a seafood processor, this very position that we are hiring for in 2013. So I started when I was a senior in college um, and it was just meant to be a one-time summer gig for me. Um, and then one summer turned into three summers. And in my fourth season, I ended up joining the human resources team. So now I assist with payroll, I help with recruiting, and I help with social media. Um, and so, you know, this is a great opportunity if you just want something for the summer. And while you sort of decide what you want to do career wise or still try and figure out what you want to do in school. I know prior to this position, I was doing a lot of unpaid internships um, as I figured out sort of what I wanted to do career-wise. So this was a great opportunity for me to work a lot of hours in a short amount of time to save up for what I was gonna do after college. So we're gonna start with a short video. Um, I will say this video was taken pre-COVID. So now we do ask uh, folks who wear masks while they're inside, um, but you'll be able to sort of see visually what the factory looks like on the inside and sort of what some of the roles and duties are. So I'll get started with that. My first impression when I got to NACNAC -NAC was, wow, this is really isolated and out there. I knew I wasn't going to have cell phone coverage, but I didn't anticipate liking that that much. I really um, loved being separated from those devices and being more plugged into my day-to-day -day life. It was very interesting to learn about different cultures and see everyone kind of interact and mix with each other. So that was, that was pretty cool. And I, I liked the way that camp was really eclectic. Um, it was not super uniform. Everybody was just so nice and so welcoming from like first years to returners to all the employees. My first impression of walking into a plant was a bit of surprise because I've never worked in that sort of environment before. So there was a lot going on. Um, so, which made me a little nervous, but after doing a tour of a plant and then knowing where I have to report for my department, it's amazing how routine that became. It was different. I'd never been in a factory setting or inside of a plant facility like that. And, uh, just a lot of moving components, a lot of machines. The main part of the Leader Creek family means having friendships that are outside your age group, outside of your ethnicity and nationality and experience. Um, met friends I never thought I'd meet and share a really unique experience that I don't think many people are able to experience in their lifetime. Working at Leader Creek has made me ready to accept any challenge. The best part of 
the Leader Creek Adventure for me was working with so many people and having like such a big group that you were a part of and just, you know, feeling the camaraderie and the teamwork of so many people and everyone working for like a common goal. It was, it was really cool just to see the unity of so many people. Okay, so that was a little bit about um, the process of what it's like inside the plant. Uh, so let me tell you a little bit about who we are. So we are a small processing facility in Naknek, Alaska. Uh, we're certainly not the only company in the area that does this type of work. Uh, we just happen to be one of the smallest. Um, and we have a very involved team. So each member of the human resources staff and of management has started off as a seafood processor. So this very position that we are hiring for right now. And every summer we hire approximately 400 people to come work with us during the summer. Um, and the dates are from June 15th until August 15th. So that's the time frame. Uh, so the actual time that you'll be up there will vary within that time frame. Um, and then we are in a pretty rural part of Alaska. So we like to tell folks it's a really great time to disconnect, sort of, um, you won't be able to stream Netflix or anything like that. So a lot of our employees do take the time they're writing um, and sort of just taking that time to disconnect a little bit. So who are we hiring? You do not need any experience to be a seafood processor. I certainly didn't when I first started. Uh, we do ask people to come in sort of with an open mindset and just able to be flexible in um, and really be willing to challenge themselves both physically and mentally. So during the peak of the season, you will be working up to 16 hour shifts, seven days a week, no days off. It can be pretty tough work, um, but there definitely is some downtime at the start of the season and at the end of the season. Um, so there's going to be times where you're tired and you're going to want to stay in bed, um, but you know, your teammates are counting on you to sort of go and um, just show up on time and sort of work to the best of your ability. Um, and we don't need anyone to come up with any prior experience. It does help if you've worked in a factory style setting or like a warehouse, because um, it is on an assembly style line of production that we run off of. Um, but we do train on the spot. So as soon as you arrive, we will walk you through orientation. You'll go ahead and go through a safety orientation as well. Um, and then we also have employees who have done this job for several years. So uh, they're also able to give you tips and tricks on the line and sort of show you the best way to do some of your tasks and uh, duties. So definitely um, you'll be able to learn on the spot and you don't need to come with any prior experience. So why are we hiring? So the fishing industry is a highly regulated industry, um, but that said, every year we are breaking records um, and just breaking numbers with the amount of salmon that we're able to process in our facility. Um, so we are hiring folks to process the fish as they come off the boat. So we have our fishers that go out and catch the fish, and then our employees are just processing it from the moment they get off the boat until the moment that our product is shipped out to go to grocery stores so that um, everyone can enjoy 100% wild caught Alaskan salmon. And so um, ultimately what, what this means is that there is a lot of opportunity for overtime. So it's definitely not the kind of job where you're gonna be sitting behind the desk and getting spreadsheet experience. You're definitely hands-on working and um, getting skills such as working with different types of people and really pushing yourself. And in the long run, it's just a lot of overtime. So um, like I said, you're, it's not the type of job where you're really like limited to the amount of hours that you can work um, during the peak season, like I said, up to 16 hour shifts, seven days a week, no days off. Um, so the majority of your income is coming from that overtime. So great if you're trying to save up for tuition or save up for a big purchase. So where will you be working? So we have uh, these main departments in our plant. We have our fish house department. That is a department that comes, um, that's the first stop for the fish once they're offloaded from the boats. So there you could be on the slime line, gutting the fish. Um, in the fillet department, you are trimming the fillets or pulling the bones out as they go by on the conveyor belt. In the backpack department, you are packaging the product. And in the packing department, you're working with the frozen fillets and preparing them for shipment. So regardless of which of these departments you end up working in, um, you can expect similar working conditions throughout all of them. So expect to work in a cold and wet environment, expect to be on your feet for the duration of your shift, uh, 
And in all of them, like I said, you will be sort of pushing yourself to um, physically and mentally. Um, and like I said, uh, during the season, you're probably gonna be like, I just wanna go home and sleep. I wanna go home and like watch some Netflix. Um, but it's really after the season that we find a lot of folks sort of reflect back on their experience and, and really sort of marvel at the fact that they were able to push themselves so hard um, to work them on the hours that they were able to, to work. And um, it's honestly a couple weeks after the season ends that people are like, okay, I think I'm ready for the next, for next round um, when the application's open. Uh, so that's what uh, it's like as far as our departments go. As far as travel goes, so if you're located in Alaska, we will fly you from um, anywhere in the state. But if you're in the lower 48, then our point of hire is Seattle. So uh, we provide the round trip flight from Seattle to our small rural area in Alaska. And then at the end of the season, we um, fly you back to Seattle. I do want to address COVID-19 because this did um, affect our industry as it affected um, and touched each of our lives. So health or the safety of our employees is top priority for us. We want everyone to feel that they are working in a safe environment. So we do prioritize the health and safety of our employees above any other goal. So for this 2020 season that we just had, uh, we did implement some new policies that were in line with CDC's recommendation. So this included having a close campus. I know this was unfortunate for folks that wanted to go out and explore the rural area that we're in, um, but this was done to keep our employees safe as well as to keep the community that we are a part of safe. We had social distancing. So um, in this picture specifically, you'll see folks um, sort of getting the salmon ready. And that's actually a department where people are moving around quite frequently. In our other departments where we're a bit more um, stationary, we did install some partitions um, for an added layer of prote protection um, for our employees. And then we also provided masks to everyone. So you'll see every individual in this picture wearing masks and that was provided by the company. In addition to that, we did have employees quarantine prior to coming up with us. Um, during that quarantine, they were tested. And then once they arrived on our facility or on the camp, uh, they were able to get tested again throughout the season. So, you know, we know that the 2021 season is changing with the vaccine distribution and all that. So we don't know exactly how COVID will evolve by the time our season starts in June, but it's very likely that we'll have these um, similar procedures in place for this upcoming season. All right, so if you wanna check us out, if you're like, hey, I want a little bit more information, you can find us on social media. So we are on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on TikTok, we're on YouTube. And then if you wanna look at some of our reviews, you can go to Glassdoor and Indeed. So here we have just um, what one former employee has said about their experience. They said, I loved working here. The community is really what makes this whole experience. It's very hard work, but Leader Creek works to put everyone in the right mindset. Um, so, like I said, we don't like to sugarcoat it. During the phone interview, we like to let people know like, hey, it's it's not the easiest job. It's definitely not glamorous. It's a, a smelly environment. It's a loud environment. Um, but, you know, we do our best to prepare everyone and really let them know what, um, what the job is gonna be like, okay? We also have a blog called the Leader Creek Catch. So I definitely recommend that you check that out to find out what current and former employees have to say about their experience. And you know, everyone ultimately comes up to work in Alaska with a different purpose. They kind of wanna get different things out of it. Some folks are coming up for the experience. Some people really just wanna work the most that they can during a short amount of time. Um, so by reading these blog posts on our blog, the Leader Creek Catch, you'll be able to get a better idea of um, sort of what people's mindset were when they came up to work with us and then sort of ultimately what they got out of the position. So I highly recommend checking that out. So if you wanna submit an application, you know we have a very simple, straightforward um, application process. Most people know within two weeks or so if they're gonna work with us for the season. So it's not like a job where you're waiting months to find out if you're gonna be able to make this big commitment to spend your summer in Alaska. Uh, we are able to hire people within a relatively short amount of time. So you would just go onto our website, so leadercreekfisheries.com. You would select apply now and you would submit a complete application. So what do I mean by complete application? 
A complete application has a current phone number and email address. That's the primary uh, way that we communicate with you. And then also has references. So we reach out to three references total, two professional references, and then one personal reference. Um, and then once you submit your application, a recruiter, it could be myself, it could be Emily, who's also in this meeting, um, or another one of our, our coworkers will reach out to do that quick phone interview. So interviews anywhere between 25 to 30 minutes. Um, and then after that, we will go ahead and reach out to your references. And if everything looks good, you'll go ahead and be hired on. I think the soonest or the quickest we've ever hired someone on was like two days just because we were able to speak to those references in such a, a short amount of time. So um, again, it's a really short application process. Okay, and that's it for the presentation. Um, so I will stop sharing my screen and I'll go ahead and answer any questions that anyone has. Thank you, uh, Carol. There was one question uh, that was asked in the chat box. Emily answered it, but I just want to go ahead and for the sake of the recording, ask it and share the information that Emily put in the chat. Uh, so the question was, how many people come back after one season? Um, so you were talking about uh, it's long, it's hard, uh, but afterwards and after people get through it, um, they feel like I can't wait for the next time. And so Emily shared that they have you have about um, 100 employees returning from previous seasons this season, which is amazing, um, <laughs> but it varies from year to year. And then um, I had a question actually while you were sharing your videos and uh, or the video and talking about the processing center and being in rural Alaska, can you share with us, um, we're in Texas right now, so can you share with us what is the climate? What can people expect? Not just like the Wi-Fi access or anything like that, but what, how should they prepare themselves for the climate of Alaska during that season? Yeah, so um, everyone that is hired on, we do provide a detailed packing list. So that has sort of more information for what we think you should bring. Um, and it's actually pretty warm in the area that we're in during the summer. So during the summer, it's up to like 18 hours of daylight. Um, so we recommend for when you're not working to have like sort of loose fitting clothes, that way you're able to deal with the, the heat. But inside the plant, because we are working with a fresh frozen product, it can get very cold. Um, and that really depends on which department you're working in. Some departments are colder than others, um, but all of them will be a pretty cold and wet environment. So uh, we highly recommend having layers. So layers is very important. Um, and we are a, we actually provide all the like protective gear and all that you would wear on the outside. So we have boots, we have, um, we provide all the utilities that you need to work. So like knives and all that. Um, but we do recommend that you bring like long johns and wool socks um, and just just tons of layers because um, you know what I might layer on for work might not be the same as like what someone else would layer on um, and I'm from California so the first time I went I was definitely cold um, but I know we have some people who are from like Michigan and Wisconsin and they're like I can work in very minimal layers um, so we definitely provide that information to everyone that's hired on that way they can prepare for the season um, but it will be different within the plant when we're processing the fish versus like outside of the plant where it's a bit warmer because we're not working like in the freezer area. Great, thank you. Um, I'm up, I'm from the north. So when I first moved to Texas, I was spotted as not a local because it was like 50 degrees and I was just wearing like a fleece and everybody yeah. else was buttoned up. So I, I totally understand that. Um, there was another question added to the chat box here um, asking, so someone can live anywhere um just as long as they can get themselves to seattle for the flight is that correct right so we hire people from all over the country and you know everyone just comes to seattle to their point of hire and then in alaska we provide the housing so we provide housing we room and board it's free we feed you once or we feed you three times a day we do your laundry once a week um and so we actually have people from all over the country working um we have people from all over the world as well so it's not like we have a high concentration of just people from this state. It really is a diverse like mix of people that end up working with us for the summer. Um, I know my first year, so like I said, I'm from California. My first year I went just knowing one person. Um, I ended up leaving with like three best friends um, and I ended up making friends with someone from Wisconsin. And I had like ended up visiting them after the season. I would have never met them if it wasn't for like this little town in Alaska. So. 
we hire all sorts of people. If you come in not knowing anyone, I guarantee that you will walk out with like three best friends. Yeah, that's amazing. What an amazing experience. Um, Crystal asked, uh, with a closed campus, how are meals set up? Yeah, so um, there's not that much of a difference with meals. Uh, we do have to limit the amount of people, like capacity-wise, inside the kitchen or the cafeteria. Um, and the main thing has changed was um, it's still like a, I guess, similar to like a buffet style. So in the past, you were able to sort of proportion your own servings, whereas now a member of the kitchen crew is the one sort of putting them food on your tray. Um, but it, that hasn't changed like the quality of the food that we have. It hasn't changed the um, different foods we have. So we have like vegetarian options, we have vegan options. Um, and during the peak of the season, we'll have salmon as a side dish. So people are able to um, eat, you know, the same product that they're, ha that they're helping um, produce. So like, I think that's a great perk. Fresh caught, like, yeah, it sounds amazing. <laughs> I wanna sign up. Uh, okay, there was also another question here from uh, Kirsten. What do people normally end up making in a season? You talked about overtime, and that's really where the money's at. So can you kind of give us an idea of what uh, people should expect to walk away with? Yeah, um, so it's hard for me to give a specific answer just because our industry is so dependent on Mother Nature. Um, and so that could really just affect everything from start to finish. Um, I will say we there are some reviews on like Indeed and Glassdoor where people listed specifically what they made their first season. Um, I know when I first started working for the company, that was back when the starting wage was about $8 an hour. Um, this is back in 2013. And I know I walked away my first year with at least $3,000 um, for being like a month there. Um, and so now our current rate of pay is $12.36 an hour regular time, $18.54 overtime. So during the peak season, when you're working over 100 hours per week, the first 40 are paid at that $12.36, and that overtime is paid at the $18.54. Um, and then again, we do not charge you for room and board. We don't charge you for meals. We don't charge you for laundry. So you don't have any expenses while you're out there. Um, your biggest expense will just be likely getting yourself to Seattle to point a higher. Um, so that's what I can say about the pay, just because again, it's completely dependent on mother nature. Uh, if we have a lot of fish and we have a long peak season, you're able to work more of those longer shifts and accumulate that over time. Great, awesome. Um, so we actually have somebody in our division that came and worked with you last season. Um, and so she shared some of her experiences with us. Unfortunately, she wasn't able to make it today, but, um, one of the things that I asked her was, how did she kind of get ready to go? And she shared um, with me that you provided a lot of information on what they should pack, what they should bring. Um, but she also mentioned that even though it's rural, um, you can receive Amazon Prime shipments. So even, <laughs> just to put that out there, even though you're pretty disconnected, you can still get your mentees or um, anything that you need. Is that right? Yeah, um, so one of the downsides of us having a closed campus is, you know, we did have like a gas station that was nearby that we could run by to get like snacks and whatever we wanted. Uh, but since we have a closed campus, that sort of wasn't an option this past season. Um, but Amazon does send packages um, to us and uh, you can actually send packages up prior to your arrival. So for example, I usually go up to Alaska in early May. Um, so I, like I'll be there to receive packages for people who aren't going to come until like mid June. Mm -hmm. um, and so part of the packing list that we send is, you know, we recommend people to send up your favorite snacks. We recommend people to send up um, any like comfort items that you don't want to pack with you. Um, so the mail can be delayed just again, because we are in a pretty rural part of Alaska. So it does take longer than usual. Um, but if you send it up ahead of time, we will definitely hold on to it until folks arrive and then hand it to them directly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, thanks for sharing that. And then when we're thinking about that, like that packing list, how do you prepare um, and sending things up ahead of time? What would you say, um, how much stuff do people bring to come and work? I mean, I know you're doing laundry once a week, but I imagine that you're getting pretty pretty ready for laundry sooner than a week. <laughs> so how much, how much do people bring and um, what can they do to set themselves up for su success? Yeah, um, so sending, having like a separate package up with like snacks is something that I highly recommend. Um, I know Emily likes to send herself up a box in like a first rate class shipping um, 
or a flat rate box, I should say. Uh, that way she can sort of like stuff it and it's still like just that one flat fee. Um, and then as far as being successful, you know, we really like to stress it's really important to take care of your feet. So pack a lot of socks. You probably pack more than what you think you would need. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, we are a little limited due to just sort of what we can carry on the plane with our luggage and like TSA and whatnot. Um, so we do recommend having sort of um, the essentials like in your big bag that way you don't have to check it. So like if you're going to bring mouthwash or like toothpaste or anything like that. Um, and then really you're going to have to bring clothes that you don't mind throwing away at the end of the season because it's going to get smelly. They're going to get dirty. Um, so you're definitely going to end up coming with a lot more stuff than you will leaving. So bring like old clothes that you're able to layer. Um, I know I like to like wear my bulkiest things before I jump on the flight. Um, but like I said, it really helps if you're able to like ship stuff up to yourself prior. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, Crystal asked another question. Uh, what is the boarding setup? Do you have roommates? Is it like a common area? What's what's the sleeping situation? Yeah, it's very similar to like a college dorm room, I would say. So uh, normally we have anywhere from two to six roommates. Um, I don't think we're gonna have the full capacity um, just due to COVID reasons. Uh, but if you have like a friend that you're coming up with or you already know someone who is also hired on or you want your friend to apply, um, definitely let us know because we can try to make those sort of roommate accommodations. That way, if you're with a friend, you might still have to share a room, but you have someone that you're sort of there with um, and sort of have that experience with. Um, but it's very similar to a dorm room style. So like the rooms are um, single sex and you have roommates and then the bathrooms are in the hallway shared. Um, and then that's just a very short walk to the cafeteria and to where the processing facility is. Um, so it's very similar to like a college campus. Everything is walking distance. You don't have to walk far for anything at all. That's awesome. All right. Um, so I'm not sure uh, if there are any other questions, but I don't see any coming in. So we'll kind of open it up if anybody wants to turn on their microphones and ask questions or add anything else to the chat that we haven't gone over. Um, we'd love to have your questions and answer them. Uh, Leader Creek will also be joining us on our April 6th fair. So if you're not comfortable adding it here or if something comes up later after we close the um, spotlight today, you can always sign up for a session with them to get some more information about this amazing opportunity. What a one, like what a, a cool thing. Um, when Marquita said that she was doing it, um, well, actually, I found out after she was already gone, so I kind of freaked out and couldn't wait for her to come back to tell me everything about it. But um, it, this is the kind of opportunity that um, I think that I would have wanted to take advantage of when I was younger, when I was going through college, if it would have been an experience available to me. So I hope that um, more folks like Marquita can come and join you this season. Yeah. <laughs> I just have a quick question. Uh, do you allow pets to go with anybody? Oh, unfortunately, we're not able to accommodate pets at this time. Um, I, mean, I know that really sucks, sorry. <laughs> oh no, I, I would have three dogs and it would be anarchy, so <laughs> I totally get it. <laughs> get a pet sitter for the summer. Um, mm -hmm. Sounds good, okay. Any other questions from our from our group that's here with us today? Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. Well, um, any closing thoughts for you, Carol? Anything else that we um, can share? Anything that I can uh, say that would be helpful? Um, no, other than uh, like you were saying, Jessica, it's really is a unique opportunity. So, although we do have a lot of people like return for the season, some people would just go just to try it out and tell their friends to, hey, I went to Alaska and I did this. And it really is something that stands out on your resume. I know prior to joining the human resources team, um, when I was still figuring out what I wanted to do career-wise, that was the first thing any employer had asked me. You went to Alaska? And so it's very much like something that stands out on your resume. It's very much something that um, is just going to be a, a unique, memorable experience that you're able to like share with others. So. Um, I'm really glad I had a friend tell me about it or else I don't think I'd be <laughs> where I'm at today. Um, so I highly recommend it. Um, and if anyone still has questions or I'm happy to like jump on a phone call with anyone to go over any other specific questions folks might have. Um, my email is carolp at leadercreek.com but I'm sure that um, Jessica will also include it 
in the, the video or um, any other follow-up email that will be sent out after this. Um, but thank you for having us. I really appreciate it. And it was really nice to hear all these questions and uh, hear from people who are like interested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We're so glad that you were able to come and join us and we're excited to have you join our fair on April 6th. Um, and so hopefully we can um, help drum up some excitement for you. Um, I know that um, anybody that knows Marquita that knew that she went has been like asking her a lot of questions. There was a lot of excitement about Leader Creek last semester, um, kind of like when she shared her experience with us. A lot of students were like, oh, wow. So hopefully we can kind of tap those people and let them know that they should come and talk with you um, and, and learn more about what this season's going to look like.